adding CO2 to your grow can take it to the next level if you do it right. Get it dialed in without wasting your time or money. But first, check this out. It's time to light it up. AC Infinity's Evo series. Every light in the series has a removable driver so you can keep the heat out of your grow space. And they are up on the Tech 3.1 for you moles per jewel if you want to geek out my favorite feature is the built-in timer on this it has 10 brightness levels you can do sunrise sunset it's right on the fixture super easy to use no separate tab timers or any of that jazz check out ac infinity's leds over at acinfinity.com coupon code dude grows will hook you up with these top notch leds they got a size for every grow tent acinfinity.com coupon code dude grows will hook you up back to the show let's get into this i'm creating more co2 as we go here i'm watching my monitor in the studio i'm up to 1100 man creating <laughs> co2 my grow in here scotty what's up let's talk about co2 why it works and when it does it yes co2 is huge man your plants are uh grabbing that carbon the c and releasing the o2 and then using that to build itself with so it's absolutely huge if your plant is capable of building itself aggressively. Everything else got to be in order, right? Yeah, definitely. Don't go out, you know, make sure it grows in order. A lot of people can get CO2 from ambient air exchanges, your CO2 and your, your environments around the ambient outside. I just checked where I live. It's 422 ppm. Uh, in your household, if you're in there, you have pets, sometimes you can be up around 700. So sometimes you might not necessarily need CO2 just to fully have your grow chug along, but this is about taking it up to the next notch. But if you're going to take it up to the next notch, make sure your grow is ready. Make sure you're, you've got good air conditioning and humidity control. Make sure you got plenty of light. Make sure your newts are dialed in. Once you've got all that dialed in, then you're going to start cranking up the volume with CO2. It's like cranking up the horsepower, right? What do you mean horsepower? Give me some numbers here. Yes, uh, PPFD. You got to have at least 800 PPFD of light, I think, to make it worthwhile. Um, yeah, and then I would go, I don't know, I would go at least a couple hundred over the PPFD. So probably a thousand, maybe 1200 PPM of CO2. Uh, you're going to get some results there. <laughs> and if you guys are getting thrown off with PPFD, it's another conversation, but you can either, either measure it with like a photo app with your phone, possibly some people have light meters with Pulse Pro or your light manufacturer might such as AC Infinity. You can see the PBFD at different areas at different heights at the different wattages when it's maxed out. So that's also handy to know what you're dealing with. Yes. And one last thing is I don't find CO2 very effective in late flower. CO2 is all about taking that carbon and building plant material with it. it grows big, fat buds. It grows, you know, really fast plants. But late flower, it doesn't take a ton of photosynthesis uh, to develop terpenes. So it's a lot less aggressive, a lot less necessary in late flower. Right on. And let's talk about getting in your grow without screwing up. Not necessarily screwing up, but you don't want to waste money, right? So if you're investing yeah. in this, you're going to get a CO2 tank, probably regulator burners. Or I haven't, I haven't seen many growers using CO2 burners in a while. That's actually uh, powered by natural gas or propane. It's not an open flame in your room, but probably not a piece of equipment. It is. You it is a flame in your room. It's just there's a box around it. <clears throat> That's what it's doing. Yeah. It's burning propane or natural gas. And of course, we all know from burning hydrocarbons, it raises the CO2 level. So, now, man, I like tanks. Tank and regulator. What do you need? That's maybe regulators like 75 bucks in america um tanks they are expensive probably 50 dollars to fill up a tank maybe 40 bucks uh you gotta buy the tank then you need a monitor controller like that ac infinity controller that controls uh parts per million uh yeah or 20 bucks yeah like 100 bucks after the deal but 500 uh, you think would get yeah. into a tank and everything for sure you, yeah even a little less you can get your setup and then you just got to look at your reoccurring costs this is where you don't want to screw up it Make sure you have a sealed room. You know, if you guys are, if you have a tent, you're injecting CO2 in, and then it's exhausted out due to the tent getting too hot and fresh air is ambiently coming in, yep. and then your controller is saying, get more CO2. Like, that's your tank's not going to last you about a few days. So uh, that's where you got to have a sealed room, and you got to be able to be dealing with the biggest hiccup to get into this is a humidifier, not a humidifier, dehumidifier and air conditioning or air control. So yep. um, that's more, another thing that is a good way to get it to maximize benefits. Yes. And man, 
I don't go over 1500 in my room. It's a direct relationship to how much light. If you've got a thousand PPM of light, PPFD of light, maybe 1200 PPM of CO2. And I mean, I guess you can go up. There are some people that go up to 1200 PPFD of light, right? So I guess they'd be 14, 1500 PPM of CO2, but huge diminishing returns once you get up that high. Yeah. And you don't have to get up that high. You know, I, I double ambient. I run about 800 something in my room. I want my tank to last me about a month. If I run my tank at 1200, I'm replacing it too quick for the investment and wanting to go to the gross store and refill the tank. So there's nothing wrong with that either. Just match it up a little bit with the light PPFD recommendation Scotty's given. Yeah, the light is the energy to grab that carbon out of the air. So if there's too much light and not enough carbon, not going to work. If there's too much carbon, but not enough light to process it and turn it into plant material, that's not going to work either. So yeah, you really want to match your environment to your CO2 output. I like this setup tip here. Place CO2 emitters up high as CO2 falls. It's heavier than air. We used to sell perforated tubing in the grocery store that had holes and people would have the CO2 push around their grow room. And I kind of, I chuckle because I say you should have good enough airflow and fans on your floor that this shouldn't matter. And if you don't, you should re- reconsider your air circulation in your grow room. Well, yes, but I mean, I don't want to put it on the floor if it's heavier than air. It's easy enough. It's like this little plastic tubing. I run it all around the perimeter of my room and then it does has like little pinholes in there and it just lets it fall. And as it falls, I've got fans on my uh, wall fans. I've got floor fans that are coming up. So yeah, yeah, definitely. My, my pro tip is I mount the little CO2 emitting quarter inch hose. It'll squeeze right behind my wall fan, like right into the ribbing. Smart. On the wall yeah. fan. And I'm like, <laughs> smart. I wish you could see the color of CO2 blowing on the canopy. Uh, but those are our tips. Do you guys run CO2? We're not saying you have to. This is if you're looking into stepping it up. You want to push the turbo a little bit. By no means is it absolutely necessary for you to succeed in your tech grow in your house. But let us know if you're running CO2. I know some people run those mycelium bags and what you got going on in your grow. Yes. And if you like this video, come on, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, share this video with another grower you know, and check out the other couple videos YouTube's recommending because we think you'll dig them.